Hello students, this is Mrs. Yaud, and today I will be teaching you Chapter 2, Lesson 2, which is Solving Inequalities Using Addition and Subtraction. So first of all, this vocabulary word, equivalent inequalities. Equivalent inequalities are inequalities that have the same solution. For example, if I gave you the following inequality, x is greater than or equal to negative 6, what we learned in our last lesson is that we would, I'm going to put 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this is negative 6. So we would have, for this one, a closed circle at negative 6 and going up. If I gave you a different question, let's say I gave you x plus 4 is greater than or equal to negative 2, we can solve this problem just like we would solve an equality with an equal sign. And what we can do is subtract 4 on both sides. And then we end up getting x is greater than or equal to negative 6. So if we were to graph this on a number line, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then you would have a closed circle at negative 6, and we would be going up. So you'll notice that this inequality, x greater than or equal to negative 6, and this inequality, x plus 4, is greater than or equal to negative 2, end up getting the same solution in the number line. So that means that these two inequalities, this one here and this one here, are equivalent inequalities. And so the addition property of inequality acts very similar to how we learned the addition property of equality. If you have something and you add, so if we have negative 3 is less than 2 and we added 4 to both sides of the equation, it's still a true statement. And here we have another example of that. So what this is saying is that anytime you have a is greater than b, you can add anything to both sides of the equation and it's still going to be true. And this is true for greater than and less than, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. You can add something to both sides of the inequality and it's still a true statement. On the next page, we see that the subtraction property of inequality is also true and it works the same way. So if you start with something that's true, in this case, three, negative three is less than or equal to one, and you subtract the same amount on both sides of the inequality, then what you end up with is also a true statement. And here's another example of that. So, um, like for, so here we have if a is greater than b, if you subtract the same amount on both sides of the inequality, then it's still a true statement and that works as well for greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, it's going to work. So that means that we can solve these inequalities. In exercises one through six, solve the inequality and graph the solution. So in number one, we have x minus three is less than negative four. So I'm going to draw my line here. I'm not gonna put it through the inequality sign because that gets a little bit confusing. Circle my variable, just like we did when we had an equality. And I'm going to do the opposite of minus three. So we're gonna add three to both sides. And we end up getting x is less than negative one. So we need to go ahead and I'm gonna put a zero here and a negative one and I'm going to have an open circle at negative one. And the reason why we have an open circle, remember, is because it's less than. If it was less than or equal to, then we would close in that circle, but we just need to keep it open for this one. And it's less than, so it's everything below negative one. You go ahead and do number two on your own and then turn the video back on to check your answer. Okay, I got zero is greater than h. Now, um, whenever I have a variable on the right-hand side, I always like to flip it around. I don't know why, that's just how I like to do things. So if I flip this around, then it's the same as saying h is less than zero. So either way, we have an open circle at zero and we're heading down. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple of these problems and then I'll have you try and do a couple on your own. I will go ahead and do number four and number six. So on number four, I'm gonna draw my line and circle my variable. This time, what I want to do is combine like terms. Since we have six minus nine there, let's go ahead and combine those together. 
So that's going to be negative 3 plus u is less than negative 2. Now the opposite of that would be adding 3 to both sides. And so we end up getting u is less than positive 1. Okay, so here's my 0, here's my 1, negative 1. And we have an open circle heading down. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number 6. So on number 6, here's my line, and here are my two variables. This time I have two variables on the left. So what I want to do is combine those two terms together. So I'm going to get 15, negative 7, and positive 8 is positive 1. So it's plus 1p, but I don't need to write the 1. You can if you want to. I'm also going to simplify what's over here as well, 15 minus 2. So that's going to give me 13. So now I still need to solve for the variable. So I'm going to subtract 15 on both sides. And when we do that, our answer is going to be p is greater than negative 2. And so we'll have our 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. So we're going to have a open circle, and we're heading up. OK, I'd like for you to try numbers 3 and 5 on your own, and then turn the video back on and see how you did. All right, number three, I got S is greater than or equal to one, which means a closed circle at one heading up. And on number five, two is less than or equal to C, or if you flip that around, C is greater than or equal to two, which means it's a closed circle again and heading up at two. All right, let's take a look at number seven. You have $15 to spend on groceries. You have $12.25 worth of groceries already in your cart. Number A, write and solve an inequality that represents how much more money, M, you can spend on groceries. And B, solve the inequality. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So we have $15 to spend on groceries, but we already have $12.25 worth of groceries in the cart. So right now we have some, and we need to use the uh, the variable m. By the way, on Big Ideas Math, uh, it gets a little bit funny when you use uh, a different variable. If it asks you to use a certain variable and you don't, it's going to mark it as wrong. So you just have to be a little bit careful with that. If you're sure you got it right and you can't understand what the mistake is, look and see if the variable that you uh, used is not the correct one. Sometimes that's what the problem is. Okay, so we have so much, so much. Uh, money and right now we already have twelve dollars and twenty five cents and we need to put something in this box some sort of inequality symbol um, we have fifteen dollars to spend so the question is then what goes here is it a less than sign a greater than sign a less than or equal to sign a greater than or equal to sign so let's take a look again we have fifteen dollars to spend on groceries that means we can't spend more than $15, but we could spend exactly $15 if we wanted to, but we can't spend more than that. So the amount of money that we have is less than or equal to 15. Okay, so then that would be our inequality that we would use. Now we want to solve the inequality. So I'm going to subtract uh, 1225 from both sides. And we're going to get an answer of m is less than or equal to $2.75. So this is how much money we have left to spend on groceries. OK, that was a nice and quick video today. As always, if you were one of my students and you need help with this, please make an appointment and I'd be happy to help you.